My name's Amanda D, and today I'm going to talk you through a few headstand variations. We're going to do the alignment for Shashasana A, Shashasana B, and Shashasana C. So you might want to be next to a wall. It's going to make it a lot easier. If you're new to the class, definitely, definitely use a wall, um, unless you know how to fall. Um, a good way to practice falling is to learn how to do tumbles, which I can maybe quickly show you now. Let me see how this goes. <laughs> but this is how you learn to fall. Is you bring your head down and you roll. At first you feel like you're a box rolling, but that's how you can fall out of the pose, is to round up in a little ball and just tumble over. But again, I highly suggest using a wall for the first few months until you feel like you've nailed your headstands. So a good thing to do is to fold over your mat until your head gets used to being on a hard surface. I wouldn't use a blanket because it's a little bit too soft and a little bit too wobbly. So you fold your mat over once and then you fold it over again. So I'm going to be de demonstrating in the middle of the garden just because that's where we're filming today. But you can do this in your home and again preferably next to a wall. So Shushasana A, you want to measure out your arms so your fingers curl around the outside of the triceps. You bring your elbows to the back of the mat and your mat is against the wall so imagine the wall's just here. So when I look my elbows are right underneath my shoulders. Now without changing the elbows interlace your fingers. Now you want to bring just the front of the crown to the floor in front of the pinky fingers and the hands wrap around the back of the head. Try not to sickle the wrist so you keep the wrist strong. So you curl your chin in without your elbows moving. So notice if you went wide with your elbows, don't do that. Elbows under your shoulders. Lift your shoulders away from your ears and that will keep the neck long so you don't compress the neck. Now 70% of weight in the arms, 30% of weight in the head at first. So push your arms down. So you can see I can lift my head by the pushing of my arms down even here. So it's not a lot of weight on my head. I keep my throat open. I walk my feet in. Now what will happen is your spine's going to want to round. You want to find that nice down dog back. So try to flip the tail up towards the sky. Find the natural lumbar curve. Even if your hamstrings are tight. Now walk your feet in. We want to get more weight. So we need to get the hips behind the head. You see how I'm moving the hips back. And instead of it being like a big core thing from here, you're just using the balancing tipping point. Push down into your elbows, bring one knee in and then the other knee. And then slowly, slowly unfurl like a flower. Legs squeeze together, press the heels up. Draw the lower ribs in and lengthen your tail up. Again, your feet are flex, your shoulders away from your ears. 70% of weight as your arms push down, 30% of weight in your head. Deep breaths. Stay in there for variations. In Shoshasana A, you can try to learn to pipe your legs up. So now you have to arc back even more, you see that? To get more weight behind my head, so my, my feet lift. You can see that's not me using core, it's just a balancing point. Push your elbows down. Lift your legs up. You can also do it one leg at a time that some people prefer. Reaching that top leg back, lift up high on the left tippy toe, and the other leg will come up. Slowly coming down, either bringing your knees down to your belly or piking your legs down, feet to the floor. Take a moment, stack one fist on top of the other. And then rest your forehead on top of your potato hands to release the neck.
So the next pose is Shirshasana B. So this is tripod headstand in English. You want to have your hands no wider than your shoulders. Spreading your fingers wide. Now a lot of the time when people do this, they bring the head in between the hands and you're not creating that perfect tripod. And um, so your head has to be the same distance from your left hand as your head is to your right hand, as your hands are from each other. So it's a perfect symmetrical triangle. So I come forward, I bring the crown of the, my head to the floor this time, elbows over your wrists, elbows in line with your shoulders. So keep your elbows hugging in, shoulders away from your ears, tuck your toes and just see how that feels. It's a lot more weight on your head. So if, if at first it just, it seems too much, bring your knees down and just keep playing with the weight. Now from here, you walk your feet in, you keep your throat open, try not to roll to the back of the head, elbows hugging in, shoulders plugging back. Now the one I teach my beginners is to lift your hips high, so you have to kind of bat bend your lower back, and see if you can climb one knee on the arm, and then the other knee on the arm, and then eventually you're trying to move your hips back to hover your knees. So again, you, you want to be next to a wall a wall behind you. Now for the variations in this, usually we come into class from a wide-legged position and the elbow and the teacher tells you to lift up into tripod headstand. So in this position, you lift up onto your tippy toes, you try to lift your hips high, press into your hands and then lift your legs up together. Press through the heels, lengthen your lower back. Move your legs back a little bit so the right, your heels are right over your head. And then slowly bring your feet down. Now there's some fun tricks that we can do from that pose once we have mastered it. And always going slowly along your path taking the next pose and the next pose once you've completed the first. Never rushing to a more advanced variation until you get the one before it. So this is Bacassana Crow Pose into Tripod Headstand. So you, you can put like a little bit more padding under the head for this. Now you squeeze your knees in. So we, you can always follow the Bacassana tutorial that is online. Squeeze your knees in, lift your hips high. You look forward and you lift your feet. Now at the moment, my arms are trying to straighten. I'm trying to round my spine up. Now to come into tripod, just watch this. You see how my knees go out? My elbows bend a lot, and now my face is really close to the floor, and it's just a matter of tucking my chin, and then I'm in that tripod position. You can lift your legs up or stay where you are. Now, if you want to play coming back into Bacassana Crow Pose, you want to take the knees onto the arms. Now, watch my shoulders. I plug my shoulders back. You see that? Now, take a moment to roll to the forehead first so you find your balance on your hands. And then once you find your balance, then you play with lifting your head up and finding Bacassana and then come down. Whew. Take a moment, bring the back of the hands together, bend the elbows towards the floor, and just wiggle your fingers. So that can be a lot of weight in your hands. You are wanting to use your fingers though. So we're just gonna go through one more variation. There are many, I could be here all day and night um, teaching you these things. But this one's a little bit more cuckoo crazy, so see how you feel. So now we're going to come, first of all, into tripod headstand. Now from here, you're going to bend your knees into your belly, twist your knees to the left, and bring your right knee onto your arm. So that's the first step. Now from here, maybe come to your forehead and play. We're lifting your head up off the floor into your side crow. Now this is the hardest part. 
till your chin in. With all your might, you have to scream out loud and lift your legs up. So that does require a lot of strength, just so you know. Bend the knees into your belly, knees to the right. Bring your left knee onto the arm. That's your first step. Maybe coming to the forehead, lifting your head, side crow. Chin in, using your strength, push up, lift your hips, and then lower your feet down. By the end of that, you should be feeling like you've worked every muscle in the body. Give your shoulders a little wiggle. So just come in onto your shins, sitting between your heels on a block of the floor, pinky toenails on the floor. Just take a moment to stretch that out. Reach your fist back with your right index finger in front of your left. Fist to the floor, lift the heart. Changing direction, well, changing interlacing of the fingers. Thumbs reach back, lift the heart. Okay, so I'm going to show you one more variation and I'm sure in the future I'm going to be showing you many, many more. So look out for those. I want you to undo your mat. So by the time you're doing this pose, you should have been practicing headstand for quite a long time. You're super, super steady. You don't need the wall anymore. Otherwise, you definitely don't do this one. So, and... At one point, it's, it's not going to hurt your head. Like now I can practice with my head on a stone and I'm completely fine. Um, your, your head just gets used to, to the, the pressure and it doesn't hurt anymore. So You're going to start with the legs wide. So your, the outer edges of your feet are as wide as the outer edges of the mat. I, I mean... Um, parallel to the side edges of the front and back of the mat. Now this is the, this is the, the place that I usually teach this pose to the um, advanced students. So it's not really an intermediate um, practice. It definitely is an advanced practice. I want to grill that into you so you don't try this at home without the um, right tools. So I want you to bring your head down to the floor so you're on the crown of the head. This is called Shoshasana C. Your arms reach back through your legs. So this is the practice when you are not coming up. It's just you're getting used to maybe you have to walk your feet in, pulling your head down towards the floor. Now with the palms face down or the palms face up, depends which one feels better to you. Hands wider than your shoulders. I like to use the back of my hands. Now from there, you lift up onto your tippy toes and you see if you can hover your feet. So you stay here. This requires a lot of core strength, a lot of strength in the neck. Push the head down. Now only if you feel super, super stable, you can lift your legs up. Press through the ball of the feet into your yoga foot. Heels right over the crown of the head. Breathe in, never hold in the breath. Slowly open the legs wide. Squeeze the legs into your belly. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Heels come down before the balls of the feet. And then heel toe your feet in just a tiny bit so your head can dangle. So you can follow up with a shoulder stand, which will help to release that. Otherwise, we're just going to come into a bridge pose. Come onto your backs. Press your feet into the floor, lift your hips. Interlace your fingers. Get the shoulder blades underneath you. Push with your feet, try and get your chest close to your chin. Open the throat. Okay, we'll do this one just for fun. So if you can do this, lift up onto your tippy toes. Try and get your palms underneath your lower back. 
So your elbows are tightly in. And now from here, we lift one leg up. And then we lift the other leg. So you support your shoulder stand on your hands. Have your heels over your hips. Then maybe bring your feet over your head. Interlace your fingers, get the shoulder blades even further underneath you. Use blankets if you need. If you have any neck issues, you definitely don't do this pose. The weight's between your shoulders and your elbows, not in your head. Throat is open. Keep moving your hips forward and your feet back. So you're crawling your hands towards your shoulder blades. Otherwise, you just stay in bridge pose or that supported shoulder stand where you can put a block under your hips. Keep reaching up through your feet. It's kind of hard to talk here, as you can see. Either lower the legs behind you or turn your thumbs to point towards your spine. Your fingers turn out. You see how my fingers go around the side, my thumbs turn in. Now from there, bring one knee towards your nose. Start to reach the other foot back. Trust that the floor is there. And there it is. Back into that same position. If you'd like a bat bend, go for it. Otherwise, stay where you are. Lower yourself down. Let your knees knock together. Finish off with any of the poses that your body might want. Always listening. Hug your knees in. Thank you. My name's Amanda D. I'll hope to see you soon.